Okay, hey everybody, it's uh, a little after one o'clock on a Friday afternoon. I'm Coach Banks, and we're here in beautiful Burbank, California, coming to you live from Claybank Studio International. This is brought to you by ClaybankStudio.com and iActingStudio.com, your online premier long distance training facility. So, hey, listen, guys, we're doing a special uh, teaching right now on eating on camera. We're going into the uh, finishing weeks on this. And uh, it's all about basically practicing and dealing with different foods. Now, those of you guys that have been working with this a little bit, uh, great. But a lot of people in the studio have been not bringing in food and not bringing food into their scenes. They're like, do I have to? Do I have to? And it's like, no, you don't have to. You don't have to do this. If you're not comfortable eating on camera, don't practice in an audition. Practice here. If you're not going to practice here, then just don't be a person that's going to ever eat on camera. Uh, because you, you, you're not going to look good just by the nature of doing it. It's just, I think, any of you, uh, how many of you have been sitting through some of this already? Okay, if you, you've been watching some people eat and eat terribly, okay. I have this great clip I'm going to show you guys after I'm done here. It's absolutely disgusting. And um, it, it's, it's not something that you can do unless you really know what it is that you're doing. Now, we've spent a few weeks already discussing... Uh, this and the rest of it really has to do with uh, you doing it and experimenting with this trying it like I said in front of a mirror trying it with different foods so what I want to do is wrap this up by just bringing to your, to your attention again the textures getting comfortable with the different type of textured foods is it wet food is it cold food is it hot food is it dry food that's going to require something to drink don't just sit down and start eating food unless you know what this food is going to do to you. Like I know as a speaker, and I do 250 talks a year, as a speaker, if I'm drinking any kind of a liquid outside of, of, of water, I can run into problems. Like I drink shakes, and, and I, I have my, my protein shakes and my food shakes and meal shakes and all that, but there's food in it. And Sometimes the food will be in my throat, and if it's in my throat while I'm, and now, and now it's going to cause me an issue. So I know not to consume certain things when I'm speaking because it, it creates problems for me. If something's too hot, it's going to create a problem for me. So usually all I'm going to drink when I'm doing a talk is water. I know that's going to work well for me. Now, when you're eating and you're doing dialogue, now you've got to see what kind of food isn't going to projectile out of your mouth. That as, as has been the case up here for a few weeks, seeing food shoot out of your mouth, seeing different foods that drool down the side of your face, um, and, and getting stuck needing to drink. And again, when to eat the food. Eating the food before your line of dialogue or after your line of dialogue is going to give you a different effect. If you want a comedic effect or you want a dramatic effect, or if you're going to do a near eat, and we've talked about that, and you're coming up in how to do a near eat, not violating the lips on a near eat. You don't stick food in your mouth and pull the food back out again. Just don't do that. Near eat means it's kind of like you're holding the food and you're talking and you have another thought so you don't quite eat. You keep on talking. You put it down and you listen and you have a, a point that's being made and then you go, okay, great, and you go to eat. You know something I was thinking about? And it's always just, it's a dance. It's a ballet that the food becomes a ballet. But if you're sticking it in your mouth and pulling it back out of your mouth again, it starts to communicate a really off message and not something that you're really probably wanting to say with the characters that you're playing. So these are, these are the sort of things that you've got to work through. Then, let alone if you're going to go into doing prat eating. Prat eating means you're making the food look funny on purpose. You're making it look disgusting on purpose because there's a difference between a real disgusting look and a planned disgusting look is what I'm going to show you uh, after 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 we're, we're done uh, taping the uh, the show, uh, I'll show you guys what it what a planned disgusting look looks like. And this is one of the one of the worst. That I've seen. It's just it's and it's funny, and it just creates that that funny um, kind of a feel. So we'll we'll take a look at that. So for those of you guys again that are watching, you can go back over the blog posts and read. There's a lot of things on there that talk about how to handle the foods differently and what to do with the foods and then how you, how you handle them. So really, we're not gonna go any further with this because the rest of it has to do with you practicing. Just practicing doing it. And not getting the food, something that we dealt with on the Wednesday, in the Wednesday class, is the food becoming a, a piece of excessive business. 
Now again, business is anything that you're doing while you're in your scene. If, I, if, the, if it says he reaches for his pen, he takes out a pen and he goes to write, that's business, all right? So anything you're doing physically is called business. And if business isn't handled properly, it gets in the way of the performances. It'll, it'll, it'll just get in the way. It's just, it makes the scene too busy, which means it's pulling focus from what you're actually doing or saying, and you don't want that to happen. Everything that you do needs to complement you. Now, we had, uh, we, we had Chris and uh, his scene partner in here on Wednesday night, and they elected to make an entrance uh, in wearing hoodies. And they've been doing this scene for three or four weeks, and they haven't worn hoodies yet. So they just thought they wanted a hoodie out and come in, and it's two guys that come down and sit, in, uh, sit down on a bench, and they go into their dialogue, and they do eat in the scene. But they came in with their hoodies on. And why am I talking about hoodies when we're discussing eating on camera? Because it goes back to what I started this whole thing with, and that has to do with any type of business, any type of add-on, anything you're doing in addition to you as the character. And again, eating, smoking, using an accent, carrying a gun, wearing a fake mustache, a hat you're not used to wearing, anything you're adding on to the character, even glasses, if you don't wear glasses and you're not accustomed to that and you put glasses on, anything that you add can't be tacked on. It, you can't make a big point out of it. It has to be integrated into the work as if it's just like you right now, George with the glasses on your head, something that you do often, or, or are you wearing your glasses all the time? Or, 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 or Christine, you're wearing a hat. These are things that I see pretty consistently with you guys. It's no big deal. But if you're doing something you've never done before, extra attention is added to that. So if all of a sudden we took Christina's hat and put it on some of you guys that aren't accustomed to wearing hats, there'd be this kind of awkward new sensation about you for a while until you own it. And that's where the term owning it comes in. It's got to be something that you're accustomed to doing. Otherwise, it just looks, you look like a fish out of water. It doesn't look right. So these guys came in with these hoodies on and they walked in. And as soon as they walked in the scene, I stopped it within five seconds because they didn't even have a line of dialogue because all I'm seeing is the hoodies. It was a big deal. They were like, watch this, we're going to put hoodies on and come in with hoodies on in the scene. And they were showcasing the hoodies. So I pointed it out to them, had a discussion along the lines of this right now. I said, now guys, get back out there, back to one, and let's bring it back in and, and own this as if you wear hoodies all the time and this isn't any big deal. So they go back out, they came back in, and now I'm seeing the characters. The hoodies were now complimenting the characters. They weren't becoming the principal character. Is this making sense to you? Yeah, and, and it's something that you have to get accustomed to. So, so when they give you things and when you're working, you're going to get cool stuff. You know, guns, like the, the first time you get a gun, if you haven't had one already, it's a big deal. You're like, oh, I get to carry a gun. You know, it's like you were over here auditioning for Criminal Minds. Oh, I got to audition for Criminal Minds. Yeah, you know, there's all this exciting stuff that goes on in this business. And it is. But you're green if you act excited about it. You just come across green as opposed to somebody that does this. This is what I do for a living. I carry a gun for a living when I play a cop or a bad guy. You know, I wear a badge when I'm playing a cop or I have a stethoscope around my neck when I'm a nurse or a doctor. You know, you, it, you, you can't make it like it's this, ooh, Halloween, look at my costume. You know, you don't want to do that. And so you, you just got to keep rehearsing with it and re rehearsing with it. So just listen on a side note, when it comes to weapons, if you're working on a legitimate project with a weapon, we'll be a weapons expert. You'll, you'll get a weapons expert that comes on set that's responsible. They bring the weapons in. They're responsible for the weapons. They make sure you're comfortable with the weapons. They clear the weapons. It's a big deal. And then when you get the weapon, what you need to do is you need to get with the weapon specialist and make sure you understand the action of that, of that weapon, whatever the action is and what you're using. Now, a lot of times when you're first starting out, they'll say, look, here's your gun. It's going to go in this holster. Don't worry about it. Don't play with it. Now, if that's the case, it's there as a prop piece. It's part of your wardrobe. And if they're telling you it's there, don't play with it. You just leave it alone. But guess what's going to happen? 
every time there's downtime, you're going to be over here down <laughs> reaching around and playing with the gun. And you, and, and you got to not. If the, the weapons expert tells you no, it's a prop, you leave it in the holster and you don't touch it. And it's, it's that simple because it becomes a big deal. Now, on the smaller projects and the independent projects that don't have a weapons expert, they're going to be breading guns, and a lot of times they get excited about the guns, too. And then they bring in the guns, and you go, oh, here's the guns, and, and it gets crazy. What you need to do is when you get assigned a gun, you got to know what it is that you're supposed to be doing with that gun, and then get with the weapon. Make sure the weapon is clear. If anybody, here, get this, get this. If anybody gives you a weapon on set, the first thing out of your mouth is going to be this. Is it has this weapon been cleared? Show me. Say it. Has this weapon been cleared? Show me. Because if not, it's on you, whatever happens. But if you've said that, it's now on the person that assigned you the weapon. You guys with me on that? All right. Because if you don't say that, you go, ooh, there's my gun, there's my gun, and you're playing around, and there's a problem, it's now going to be on you. And for safety purposes, you want to make sure that it's with the person that gave you the gun. Now, in here, we do showcases all the time. Uh, we, we do different things that, that happen. And if anybody's bringing, we have a gun in the back that we use. If anybody's bringing a weapon in here, that weapon has to be cleared by me because I'm the authority in the room. So whoever is the governing authority on the set, on the project, in the room, they're the ones that either have to clear the weapon or the assigned person so let's say I have a weapons expert in here. I say, okay, well then this, you're gonna clear it with Joe over here. Joe's gonna clear the guns. Okay, but you gotta make sure that the weapons are cleared. Once all, that's just a safety thing. It's not really part of this talk, but I just wanted to give that to you while we're on this thing, because you start to get excited when they hand you things. Don't, don't get caught up in the excitement. Handle the responsibility. Here's your weapon. Great, has this weapon been cleared? Can you show me? Because if there's a bullet in that gun and you pull the trigger and you kill somebody, the rest of your life will not be the same as it is right now. And it's that simple, and it happens. So why take the chance? Always clear it. And good weapons, when you get on, an, when you get on a legitimate project uh, with A-level weapons people, you'll see. It's all done very properly, and then you learn from that. But when you get on the smaller projects and people don't know, and they get the guns, ah, now you're dealing with stupid stuff, especially if you're shooting blanks. That's a whole nother set of issues, but that's not this talk. Uh, I covered what I wanted to cover with you guys. So when that does happen and you do get the weapon, get alone with it. Once it's been cleared, get alone with it. Get a, get, make it yours. It has to become yours. It's yours, the way that you do it, okay, how, the, how all that happens. Now, I, I've had, I've had a weapons training. Uh, I've been on combat ranges and everything before I got the TV show. I was third detective on a cop show. And when they gave me my, my gun, I said, okay, well, I want to I want to wear it on, on my opposite side because I feel like my my character is 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 a is a, a cross uh, reaches across to grab the gun, okay? Because you can go to your holster this way, you can go to your holster this way, and I wanted to go to my holster this way just because that's just I just thought it was cool at the time, and that's how I wanted to do it. So I'd wear the gun on that on that side, but then there were certain episodes where they didn't want it on that side, so they throw it on this side, and it just kind of became one of those deals. And, you know, it's just, it, you got to own it. The point of it is, is, is you're making it your own. The food, you're making it your own. So everything that you do, you're making it your own. And where do you learn to do that? You learn to do it here. Uh, in, your, in, in, your, in your training center. If you're not in a place to train, you got to get in a place where you can explore all these things because the big mistake that actors make is using an audition room as their studio. They go, oh, well, I'm just going to go on this audition so I can learn. Well, what's that casting director going to think about you if you're not in there and not really knowing what you're doing? You don't come in professional. You're not handling it right. They won't call you back for years. They won't call you back. You want to get on the short list. And how do you get on the short list? You come in and you're good. You might not be right for that project, but you're going to be right for that casting director. You'll be right for that room. Why? Because you're, you're, you're ready to go. You're ready to go. And when you're ready to go, then a casting person knows you're, you're a go-to person. And you don't want to work that stuff out. I, I say this. Don't train on hiring ground. Hiring ground is a casting office. A training studio is, is, in, is, 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 is an acting studio. Train in a studio and put your product out 
in an audition room. Train in the studio, put your product out in the audition room. Don't train in the audition room. Okay? So you come in here, this is your studio, this is your place to explore. You're going to be moving with your food, doing your thing, and getting more and more comfortable at being you while a camera is on you, while people are watching you, that you can be as natural as you are when you're at home brushing your teeth in the mirror in your own bathroom with no one else around. Just how self-conscious are you really when you brush your teeth at home with no one else around? I mean, seriously, this is an activity you should do every day. Right? If not several times a day, and how much of a, how much self-consciousness do you really have when you're doing that? Hopefully none. That's the level of comfortability that you want to get to when you got cameras beaming down on you, lights pointing on you, and a room full of people, and somebody sitting there with a script making sure that you get everything right. Right? And if you haven't been on the set of a of a live multi-camera shoot, it's it's a, it can be a little intimidating especially if they're shooting, they're still shooting film, okay? You got these, these big yeah, canister of film cameras, boom, 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 boom. Maybe there's four or five cameras on that. They're all pointing in on you. All the lights are coming down, pointing in on you. This boom is on a thing and it's coming down on you. You got the whole team of people. The producers are all there looking at you. You got the director watching you. You got the script supervisor making sure that you get everything right. And you got to be as comfortable as, as you are when you're home brushing your teeth in the bathroom in the mirror with the door closed and nobody home. That's obviously what we do. And that's why you, you have to train to be able to do this. <laughs> because that is not a natural thing. And our job is to make it natural. Okay, I'm out of time. So that's it for this week's on-camera eating. We're going to be moving on to a new topic next week. So wherever you are in the world, uh, tune in again next week, 1 o'clock. I'm Coach Banks. This is Clay Banks Studio International, bringing you the Performance Zone, sponsored by iActingStudio.com. I want to thank you a lot. Have a fantastic weekend.